Hey guys, it's the Unsmooth Criminal. I'm here with part three of what if Femme Deku was Azura from Azura's Wrath. And I probably spelled Wrath wrong on the first video, and I probably spelled Azura wrong. But I don't really care, because I love doing the what ifs. I don't like writing. So, ha! So, <laughs> we left off at Bakugo's birthday party. So, Bakugo is 16. We skip a week. They've already gotten their letters. It's first day of UA. And Bakugo walks over to Azura's home with Shoji. Because Shoji lives with Azura. And he walks to the door and knocks. And Bakugo gets a death stare from Shoji when Shoji opens the door. And Shoji says, what do you want? And he goes, I would like to talk with Azura? Is that okay? And he goes, fine. So, he walks to the, basically, entryway of the, or walks out of the entryway of the house and yells to a back room, yelling, Azura, you got someone here for you. And she goes, okay, I'll be out in a minute. And a few minutes later, Azura runs to the front door and goes, oh, hey, Bakugo. Or, no, she calls him Kachan now. And she goes, hey, Kachan. And he goes, oh, hey, Azura. Um, you ready for the first day? And she goes, yeah. And Azura is more cheery than normal. And Baku notices this, and when he gets to school with Azura, they see Mina and Hagakure. And he walks up to Mina and asks Mina a question. What's so special about today? And Mina's like, oh, I'm guessing Shoji didn't tell you. And he goes, tell me what? And Mina goes, oh, uh, <laughs> it's Azura's birthday. And he goes, I never was told. And Mina goes, yeah, kind of makes sense. Shoji doesn't like you. And he goes, I understand that. Um, is there any way for me to get Shoji's trust and like and she goes nope you just gotta work out being his friend it took a while for us too he's a very untrustworthy person and Baku goes okay I understand um uh, that's pretty much it and he walks away and he, his attitude has completely changed his habit of yelling is gone his mindset of him needing to be, or him being the best, is almost gone. He still calls some people extras if he, maybe like once or twice. He's getting rid of that. A lot of his habits that are via his personality have been changing. Because he doesn't want to be treated like the snobby brat he was. He wants to be treated like the hero that he wants to be. And so he's currently uh, just sitting at his desk quietly. And he noticed a yellow um, <laughs> a yellow sleeping bag underneath the uh, podium for the teacher, for what the teachers see, or from what the students see. And he noticed it, and... He did some hand signs to Azura, telling her that at one person hiding. And she looked at the podium, and she saw a little bit, a little sliver of a sleeping bag. And she goes, oh! <laughs> and she gets the massive grin, because she's been a little bit of a prankster lately. She hasn't done any mean, rude pranks. No, she just does, like, little funny things. And the like, bell rings for class to start. Everybody starts to quiet down. They're starting to. They're not quieting down. And Azure goes, Hey, Sensei, how many ta how many uh, minutes does it take to uh, quiet down a restless bunch of kids? And I saw I was trying not to answer. Hard, though. And Azure goes, Eh, you already know it takes an expulsion threat. And he busts out laughing. <laughs> And everybody hears this laughing from the podium. Like, what the fuck is going on? 
And so they walk into the, or no, they sit down, they quiet down, like, what the hell's going on? And Isaiah gets up saying, <laughs> that was funny. That, that was a lot of, that. you're a comedian. You're a comedian. And she goes, thank you. I've tried. And I apparently succeeded. And he goes, yeah. So the only two people who aren't at a threat of expulsion right this second, are Bakugo and Azura. And everybody's like, what? Who the hell's Bakugo? Guessing she's Azura. And he goes, Bakugo and Azura have been governantly, governmentally mandated to attend UA. So they can't be expelled. But all y'all prom children can. And he's yelling and threatening them. And they're like, oh god, we gotta be in attention. And the entire time, Azura's trying not to laugh. And Bakugo's keeping his mouth shut. Because if he starts talking, Aizawa's going to punish him with training. Because <laughs> they've been training with Aizawa for a few years now. I think, yeah, since the beginning of middle school, they've been training with Aizawa. The only one who can actually survive Aizawa's training and go on to do even more training after is Azura. So, <sighs> so we go to, uh, after a few lessons about what heroes are supposed to be and what they do. Aizawa says, okay, everybody out to the training field. And they all go out, and Aizawa goes, okay, Azura, we have the block and cement toss over there. You go start. And she goes, yes, hi, uh, yes, sensei. And she walks over, and everybody sees her just start punching the cement block. And they're like, what, what, what is she doing? And he goes, okay, Bakugo, you first. And he tosses Bakugo the ball, and they hear a giant fleshy wet explosion and they look over and they see Azure's missing an arm and she stopped she missed an, she blew off an arm and stopped and her face is going red because she's remembering all the compliments she's gotten and she's not used to compliments yet she will be though so her face is red and Baka goes, eh, she's actually controlling it this time. And he walks up to the circle after grabbing the ball, and Azura continues punching. And she is currently punching the wall at, as hard as she can, basically obliterating it constantly. And Cementos just keeps remaking it as fast as she can bl obliterate it, which is really damn fast, because he has to be... He's been training his quirk by making walls for her. And he's gotten faster and faster with his cement, uh, uh, meat, uh, um, manipulation. Why was manipulation so hard to think of? But he's been getting a lot faster and faster with cement ma manipulation. And Azura has got, been getting a lot stronger and stronger. So, <laughs> they kind of compliment each other, and Azura keeps beating the wall, and they hear another wet explosion, and they've gotten uh, forth through the people in class. And everybody goes, and they finally hear one more wet explosion, and this was her fifth arm. And her dominant arm, her right main arm, is the last arm that survived. And she is uh, walking to the circle. She's glowing like crazy. Check, go. Go. Oh, my cat is walking out. But she's glowing, and she walks up, and Aizawa hands her the ball. 
she grips the ball and the ball well, squ squishes just a tiny bit because she just barely put any pressure into the grip. And Azaz says, okay, we are going to be backing up quite a bit. And if it goes as far as I think it will, uh, she's the strongest person in class. And everybody's like, oh, we have to back up. And he goes, yeah, you got to back up. If you don't back up, you're going to die. And he just says that casually. And they're like, what, what? And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we kind of need to back up right now. And they see her pulling back her arm. And she is slowly doing it. And Baku goes like, oh, crap. And Aizawa goes, yeah, she's doing that. And he goes, I know. Kind of, oh, god damn it. I gotta redo my throw now. And he goes, you didn't use your full power? And he goes, no. I didn't. I kind of didn't want to blow out their eardrums. And he looks at the girl with the creation cork and he goes, oi, you. And he doesn't yell this. He just goes, oi, you. And she goes, what? He goes, what's your name? And she goes, Momo Yayorozu. And he goes, good for you. Now, uh, Momo, I think you said, uh, can you make us some ear protection? And she goes, sure. So she starts making ear protection. This ear protection is high-grade ear protection, not the cheap stuff that you could buy at any uh, local hardware store. No, this is military-grade that is meant for being around tanks and artillery. So... <laughs> She made this and gives it to everybody. They put it on. And Bakugo yells, Go! And he yelled this at the top of his lungs. And Azura pulled back her arm completely. And went forward. They didn't even see her arm go forward. They just saw her arm disappear. Because her arm did blow off. And... Aizawa looks at the machine, and it says, error, and he goes, well, uh, Bakugo, here you go. And he hands Bakugo the machine, and Bakugo goes, okay. And the machine goes, boom. And Bakugo's hands, and he goes, really? You're using me to defuse bombs now? And he goes, no, I just know you can withstand an explosion in your hands. And he goes, true. Uh... But I'd prefer not to take a direct explosion from something that's not my quirk. And he goes, true, true. Um, well, you did anyway, so you kind of just surpassed your limits there. And Aizawa doesn't have the Yami idea of surpassing your limits, but he does have a Yami kind of personality for when it comes to training. Of train to the Till you can't train anymore and then train even more kind of personality and Aizawa pulls out another machine and he turns it on and he goes Bakugo now you can go full power and Bakugo picks up a ball and he concentrates on this ball he concentrates on it fully and he cocks back his arm and they see some sparks at the very edge of his palm and he pulled back completely, and he went forward, and his whole hand lit up with an explosion. And he was hurting after this, because when he goes full power, and he's not used to it, which he's not used to his full power yet, he kind of bruised his hand. So he goes, ow, 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 ow. And he's shaking his hand, because the palm is bruised, and... Aizawa goes, okay, so is that your limit? And he goes, yeah, that is my limit. And Aizawa goes, okay, so I understand your limits now. I understand all your limits now, and I just need to do some calculations. And he just said that, and Azura <laughs> just starts chuckling, going, you don't do anything. You just make uh, <laughs> training on what we were weak on, and... The, and Make us even train even harder for what we are strong on. And he goes, yeah, true. Um, so, Mineta. 
And they all look at Mineta. And I saw goes, you, sir, are disgusting. You are a pervert. And Mineta goes, what do you mean? And he goes, I was watching the bathroom or changing room. If you guys want to call it that. And I saw your little outburst over the people. So, yeah. And he goes, damn it. And he says, you get one more chance, and if I find you peeping again, I will expel you. And he goes, yes, yeah, sensei. And he goes, don't call me sensei, just call me Mr. Aizawa. I freaking hate people calling me by formalities. And they go, but Mr. Aizawa is a formality. And he goes, pish posh. I've been called Mr. Aizawa my entire life. It doesn't bother me. Anymore, at least. And they go, okay, uh, Mr. Aizawa. And he goes, good, good, good. And so they go back to class, and he goes, in a few days, we are having a special guest to come in and teach you how to be heroes, apparently, because it's not like you guys already don't know how to be heroes. You just need to be a hero. And they're like, what, what does a hero even mean? And Azura and Bakugo start laughing because they know exactly what a hero means and what it means to be a hero. And Azura goes, Oh, is he coming? And Ome, he uh, rings the phone of Aizawa and Aizawa picks it up and goes, What? And All Might says, did they make it into class? And he goes, yeah. And, and All Might starts shaking. And <laughs> Aizawa basically feels him shaking through the phone. Is like, you're scared of her, aren't you? And as you're hearing this, starts laughing her ass off. Being like, he's scared of me. <laughs> and she's laughing and laughing and laughing. And Bach goes, starts to chuckle at this because he likes seeing Azura laugh and have fun. And everybody's like, oh, what's going on? And Azura says, I scared the number one hero. <laughs> and she's laughing even harder now because everybody's gaping like a fish because, wait, she scares the number one hero? And <laughs> she <laughs> she's currently... The same size, the same height as Shoji. Bak goes roughly Shoji's height. Roughly. The guys are roughly Shoji's height. Shoji's an average person now in height. And everybody in the other classes are the same height as Canon, so. <laughs> yeah. So everybody's like, okay. Um, this is going to be weird. So we skip a few days, and it's now the heroes versus villains, and Aizawa is just okay, uh, cooking a bag of popcorn real quick in the teacher's lounge, and he runs to the observation room, and he sits down, and he gets a bag of popcorn out, and he opens it, and Azura goes, oh, are you coming to watch me? And he goes, hey, hey, yeah. And she goes, yes. And everybody looks at Aizawa and Azura and they're like, are you guys family? And he goes, no. Well, I did kind of adopt them. And she goes, yeah. My parents died a while ago. Uh, like, I think it was the beginning of middle school you adopt me, adopted me after that incident. And he goes, yeah, I did adopt you after that incident. And I adopted Choji too. And they're like, wait. Why did you adopt Shoji? And Shoji goes, because we're brother and sister. And he stands right next to Azura and she goes, yeah, we are brother and sister. And they all look at Shoji and Azura and go, what? 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 <laughs> and Azura goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're brother and sister. We've been brother and sister for our entire life. I don't think we can mess up on being brother and sister. So, um... Yeah. And she's just staring at Shoji and going, are you ever going to take that mask off again? And he goes, not till lunch and dinner. 
And she goes, you know, you don't even eat breakfast anymore. And he goes, I know. And she goes, it's bad for you to not eat breakfast. And she's talking like an older sister. And he goes, I know. I don't care. I eat big br lunch and big dinner. And they're like, wait, he eats lunch? And she goes, yeah, he, he eats lunch in the dorms. And they're like, wait, they have dorms? She goes, yeah. You guys are getting the notice today, I think. And Isaiah goes, shush. It's starting. And Azura walks out because he's, she's like, oh, I got to go. Um, talk to you guys later, hopefully. If I don't have to carry all might to the nurse's office. And they heard that and they're like, wait, what? And as I was like, everybody, shush, be quiet. Don't say a word or I will expel you. And Bakugo goes like, you can't expel me. And he goes, I know, but still, it's a threat. Take it as a threat. And he goes, okay. Oh no, you're going to expel me. And Azal goes, shut the fuck up. And he goes, no. I'm making lunch. It's lunchtime at my house. He goes, no. And Azal goes, fine. Here's the popcorn. Shut up. And Baka goes, ooh, popcorn. And he grabs a bag and he grabs the second bag that Azal uh, warmed up. And he starts eating. And he loves watching Azura fight because he thinks that it's scrappy and he likes it. So Azura is currently fighting with All Might and All Might is fighting her. And everybody's seeing that I'm not describing the fight yet. I'm not going to. That everybody's seeing this and be like, oh crap. Whoa, no, no, that's not possible. And I saw and Aizawa says that she has found a way to stabilize her power, too. Yumina goes, hey oh <laughs> Yeah, we kind of helped with that. And Aizawa goes, yeah, they kind of did. Um, what else did she find out? And uh, Mineta is like, huh. <laughs> That's a very skimpy outfit for a hero. And as I goes, uh, no, no, it's not. Uh, Midnight's is a lot skimpier. And he goes, whatever. And as I goes, okay, um, Mineta, it's your job to make the popcorn. And he goes, what? There's no microwaves anywhere. And he goes, the dorms are here on campus, and he shows a map. So go to the dorms and warm some up in the microwave. And he goes, that will take the entire time that they're fighting. And he goes, yeah, now go. Or I will expel you. And he goes, fine. And so he leaves. And Mineta goes to the dorms, and he sees the room labeled Mineta. And he was about to walk in when someone says, what are you doing here? The dorms aren't open yet. And he immediately runs to the kitchen saying, I saw one popcorn. And he goes, okay. And Mineta is being watched by someone. And this someone is Snipe. And Snipe says, hey, you're the pervert in class 1A. And Mineta goes, uh, maybe. And Snipe goes, I'm watching you. And Mineta goes, okay. And he quickly makes the popcorn as fast as possible because he doesn't want to be watched by Snipe anymore. He doesn't want to be observed by any heroes. While he's walking back to the uh, training grounds, he watches Midnight changing into civilian clothes through a window in the girls' locker room that is very obscurely put there and only with Mineta using his quirk to actually try and look in, he would be able to see in. And he's looking in, and someone walks up behind him and barks at him. For, and he freaks out and drops to the floor, and this guy keeps barking and nonstop barking. And Mineta starts running to the training ground. And Aizal gets a ding on his phone saying Mineta was a pervert again. And Aizal's like, oh, crap. So Azal 
picks up the phone and says, Nezu, uh, I'm expelling a child. And Nezu goes, what do you mean? And he goes, uh, Mineta, he's too much of a pervert to be in, uh, to be a hero. And Nezu goes, oh, um, will do. And Mineta gets back and Aizawa says, I have connections everywhere. And Mineta goes, oh, crap. And he gets the... Slip. I'm not going to say what color it is because every school has a different color slip. And he gets the slip saying you're expelled. And he's like, come on. And he goes, no second chances. You tried. You failed. So no second chances. And Mineta's like, fine. And he walks to the main office after dropping off the popcorn and Everybody's like, uh, did you have to do that? And he goes, yeah. And Eda is a pervert. And he doesn't respect the privacy of people. So I had to. And they go, okay. And they go back to watching this fight between uh, Azura and All Might. And Azura has toned down her power, so she still has all six arms. But she's toned down her power just to give All Might a good push in his uh, fighting. Because Azura's regeneration is not part of her quirk. So they put some stem cells from Azura into All Might, and they they remade All Might's organs. And they healed him completely. So he still has prime, uh, prime All Might strength. So All Might's still super freaking strong. Azura is fighting him at All Might level. He, she didn't, never goes above All Might level. She knows that if she goes above All Might level, she's going to lose her arms. And it takes a good 24 hours to regenerate her arms. And she's been openly experimented on. And she has agreed for Nezu to experiment on her to help uh, alleviate some medical conditions. And hopefully help regenerate lost limbs for the civilians of the Japanese, uh, the country of Japan, Japan. And so she allows them to experiment on her genetics and DNA. So UA has the formula to help regrow limbs. But only UA. And the formula is put inside of Azura. And that's important. It's not put inside Azura like the... Uh, uh, um, sealing formula of the Nine Tails. No, no, no. It's put in Azura literally. It is her organs, is the formula. Any organ that she misses, she just regenerates. No matter how badly damaged they are, she will just regenerate them. So she literally can regenerate from any wound. If given enough time. So. Azura is now. Um, getting a little tuckered out. And it takes her a lot of energy. To stay at one level. Instead of going maximum. Which is really easy. Because she just continues punching. And growing. So it takes her a lot of energy. To stay low level. And energy or, or power and all might is getting really tired out because he's been fighting like at a hundred percent the entire time and all might finally goes i'm done that was fun and he flops on his back saying hi yield and she goes yes again and she just leans on her hips a or not hips uh knees a little going i'm good for the day and she stands straight up and leans a little back like you're tired. And she goes, time to go rest. And she walks into the observation room and sees that 10 bags of popcorn have been gone through. And she starts to laugh because Aizawa is Aizawa again. And so she is 
just watching this all unfold and or watching the rest of it unfold and they're like oh you want some and she was like hell yeah and Azog gives her a bag of popcorn and says well you and Bakugo don't have to do the next training exercise because I've already put you through that exercise so everybody else get out there All Might will explain the Rule. So All Might explains the heroes versus villains, and Azura sees one match. She's like, that would be fun. And she taps Bakugo's shoulder and says, wouldn't that be fun? And Bakugo goes, yeah. Um, Azaga, can we join? And Azaga goes, yeah, but only you could fight each other. And Azura, no All Might strength. Only Bakugo's strength. And Azura goes, what? And he goes, no, no, no. And she goes, but he has explosions. He goes, fine. Half of all my strength. She goes, okay. And she's limited herself a lot lower before, which takes a lot more energy. But the higher she li- uh, limits herself, the uh, less energy it takes. And <sighs> Bakugo walks up to All Might saying, we're going to go last. And All Might goes, okay. So how many bombs do you want? And Baku goes, two. And All Might goes, okay. And he presses a few buttons on a remote and two bombs show up. And Baku lifts them because he's been training like Saitama. He lifts them. He's not as strong as Saitama, but he lifts them. And he just walks them over to a building. He puts one in the building and says, this building is the first bomb. And he walks over to the second building and he puts another one in the building. And he says, this building is the second bomb. You watch them. I'll put these away. And she goes, okay. So he walks back to the first bomb and picks it up and walks to a certain room, puts it down. And she's not watching him. She's watching the other ones. And everybody else who is currently in the uh, observation room, because they, it's not their turn, is watching and is like, what What are they doing? And Azaga goes, oh, um, Baku and Azura are doing a version of your training, but it's going to be a 1v1. And they're like, but she can go up against All Might. And he goes, yeah. And Bakugo can go up against All Might and win. And they're like, wait, what? And he goes, yeah, I told Bakugo 50% strength. And I told Azura Bakugo strength. And she knows exactly what I mean. So, we won't have any big uh, uh, catastrophe class punches here. We'll just have a, a slight wind pressure if they start punching. So, Bakugo and Azura start their match. But let's go back in time to Bak- or Azura and All Might's match. So, All Might's like, I'll let you get two punches on me and then I'll start punching back. And she goes, nah immediately and he goes okay so he readies up a hundred percent punch and he full-blown united states smashes her into a wall and she gets up and she starts laughing and she's just like oh crap is this gonna work and mina goes yeah it's gonna work um uh she'll stop right before her first arm blows off and she goes but i thought her second arm was all might strength and they go that was a month ago. Not now. Before her uh, first arm blows off is All Might Strength. And he goes, blah, 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 blah. And he's doing a really good uh, gaping fish impression. And he goes, what, what? And they go, yeah. She's gotten a lot stronger in the last month. And he goes, I really should have been training with Aizawa. And they go, yep. Yeah. You should have. But you wanted to train alone. And he goes, yeah. So. Just a quick uh, summary. Shoji's training was him making as many arms as possible. And just holding them straight up. So he has super strong. Long arms. 
And his body's also really strong, but he's a little slow. <sighs> so, we go to the beginning of uh, All Might and Azura's match, and All Might's punching her, Azura's punching him, All Might's punching her back, and it's just a full-on fist fight. And All Might starts to go faster and faster and faster, and all of a sudden she starts uh, hitting him. And with all six arms at once. So she started with two arms. Then she went to three arms. Then four arms. Then five arms. Then six arms. And her eyes started to glow pink. Not white. Not red. Pink. And it starts to go more red. And then it stops glowing red entirely. And it goes complete white. And All Might is comprehending this all because they're going at light speed though and he's compliment complimenting it all or comprehending it all and he notices that her face is going red not light speed uh the speed of sound and her face is going red every few seconds and he goes oh okay so that's how she limits herself i wonder what will happen when she understands and is not bothered by the comments anymore. And this is all in his head. So they continue fighting. And All Might's wound opens very slightly. Because there's still scarring. And it hasn't completely healed over. Because it was Because. Well yeah. It, the treatment. Still hasn't completely taken hold. Duh. It takes a while for things to regrow. Especially when you're not the. Original owner of those organs. They gotta adjust to your body. So, she is watching as All Might is slowly gaining up on her, or uh, gaining one up on her, and she starts to go a little stronger, and she feels pain in one of her arms, and she knows that if she goes any further, her arm's going to blow off. So, she goes, I can't go any further, let's just stay at this speed, and Every punch she does with that arm, she feels pain. But it's very dull, hint, a faint hint of pain. And it's a sharp one, too. So it's an instant, and she goes, okay, pain, 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 pain. Doesn't hurt very bad, but there's still pain. And they do this for like an hour or two, and Azura and All Might are plum tuckered out. Completely out of it. And we go to the Bakugo versus Azura. <sighs> Bakugo's in the first building saying, okay, you gotta go to the first building where I place the first bomb, and then we'll go to the second building if you touch this bomb or uh, make it fall to a different level. And she goes, sure. And she starts punching one of the cement walls, and they see this, and she starts running through the city, obliterating buildings to where it's only those two buildings left. And Isaac goes over the loudspeakers going, really? We're, it's going to take a long time to fix that. And she goes, yeah, but meh. And she's the level of All Might at this moment. So she thumbs it down a little and she runs at All Might speed to um, Bakugo's position. And Bakugo sees her run in and says, Ready? And she goes, Ready. And they start fist fighting. She's... He still has his incredible battle sense. And she has her incredible uh, fighting speed and comprehension for battle so she's like a instinct version of shikamaru if anybody's watched naruto and baku is like a instinct version of shikamaru and um shino shino is calculate then do shikamaru's calculate every move that i could possibly do try it and then Calculate again. 
And Azura is the Shikamaru one where it's calculate while you're fighting. Do a move, calculate the next. Do a move, calculate the next. Do a move, calculate the next. So they see them and it Shoji and Mina and Hagakure, well, Hagakure first, but they see a smile creep up on Azura's face and she's fighting and she's smiling like mad. Not the insane grin like the Cheshire cat. No, hell no. But they start grinning and or she starts grinning and Bakugo starts to laugh at this and he's having fun. She's having fun and Shoji goes, oh crap, I know what's going on now. And Mina goes, T! And all of a sudden the door opens and Nezu goes, I'm here. I've heard my call being, I've heard my call. I have been summoned. And Mina goes, yes. And she goes, I got two T's. That one, and she points at the monitor and she pulls out a very, very expensive T that Nezu can't really find. And this one. And Nezu's eyes widen going. Eh. I haven't tried that one. I've tried that one. I haven't tried that one. Let's do this. And he brings out some. Uh, a, a kettle and. Some teacups. And from nowhere. Out of nowhere he brings it out. And Shoji looks at him and go, goes. What the hell? How'd you bring those out? And he goes, trade secret, my friend. Trade secret. And Shoji goes, I, I, I honestly don't care anymore. I'm pissed off at him for what he did a while ago. And Mina goes, I understand, but you can't deny what you see on screen. When you sparred her, she had to hold back so much that she was hurting after. And he goes, I know, I know. When I spar her, she has to hold back a lot. When Hagakure spars her, she has to hold back a lot. He's the only one that can keep up this well with. She this what uh, she can keep up this this much with. Or he can, he's the only one that she or bleh, she's the only one he can he can keep up with. Without accidentally surpassing. And Shoji knows this and is like, I know, but I don't like it. And they go, we know. But come on, dude. You gotta get past it. And he goes, I I know. Ugh. And they all go, Shoji, Shoji, Shoji. And he goes, I know. Shut up. Leave me alone. And they go, okay. And he's just gritting his teeth because he doesn't want this to happen. But apparently his sister does so he puts a note in his pocket and he says i'm going to change because i'm not needed here anymore i want to go to my dorms and prepare and as goes okay oh and that note i'll tell uh him it's from anonymous and shoji goes no need i put my name on it and he goes oh okay well I'll still tell him that there's something in his locker for him. And he goes, okay. So we skip to the end of the Heroes vs. Villains with Azura and Bakugo. And it's a tie. It's a complete draw. Because Azura couldn't get to the bombs in time and Bakugo couldn't defeat Azura. So they counted it as a tie because Azura can kind of survive an explosion. So Azura's like, dang it! should have gone a little harder and he goes you've gone any harder you would have blown my head off so and she goes yeah but that was fun and he goes yeah that was actually kind of fun let's do it again and she goes yeah definitely and they're laughing about it they're having fun about it and shoji is currently in his room with a punching bag a very big hefty punching bag because he could still hit hella hard I'm not saying that Shoji's weak in this one. No, he could still hit hella hard like, like in canon. But Shoji's more of a recon than a fighter. And Shoji is now... Uh, calming down by punching something. 
So, Shoji is using all of his strength to hit this punching bag. And this punching bag breaks. This wasn't a light punching bag. It was a traditional leather with actual sand in it. Not the new uh, newer ones, which are fake leather with fake beads of sand in it. No, this was traditional leather with actual sand in it. So it was a lot heftier and a lot more durable. And so Shoji breaking this is like, because he did, he broke it, is like um, Captain America punching through a concrete wall. Or no, a steel wall. It's hard, but he can still do it. If no one knows that, if no one knew that Captain America break uh, punch through a steel wall, well, you're all not very smart. So we skip to when Bakugo, uh, Azura, Mina, and Hagakure are all walking to the dorms. Because Azura, Mina, and Hagakure all had their stuff shipped. Or, no, Bakugo, Azura, and Mina. No, Bakugo, Mina, and Hagakure eh, all had their stuff shipped. And Izumi needs to have her stuff unpacked. Because it's already there. Aizawa already took it with him when he came to school that day. Because he knows where they live, so he kind of went and picked their stuff up. And Azura gets there, and she walks in and sees that Shoji is absolutely devastated with exhaustion. And she walks up to him and asks, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, I'm fine. I don't like what you're doing, but I'm fine. She goes, what do you mean what I'm doing? And he goes, that Pomeranian don't like. But I'm fine with it. I can friggin' accept it anyway. She goes, what do you mean? And Mina's like, she is dense. And Mina walks up to Baku and says, what are your feelings for Ezra? And he goes, um, um, and she goes, wow, they're made for each other. And Hagakure starts to laugh because Mina just literally asked, how Bakugo felt about Azura in front of Azura, and Azura is currently face of red because she kind of didn't want to confess because she understands her feelings, but she doesn't know how to express them. So, yeah. So, we skip a week and it's still three weeks before the usj and azura has finally asked bakugo out because mina was like truth or dare and azura's like dare and mina said i dare you to ask bakugo out finally and everybody that it was just the girls that, at this point and said damn and Azura is like, uh, and, and, I, I, and, and I can't. And she's stuttering and she doesn't know how to express herself because she is still basically foreign to feelings. Yeah, there we go. And Mina goes, girl, you need to do it or I'm posting that thing online. And she goes, you better goddamn not. And Mina goes, I will if you don't. And... Mina pulls out her phone and has a video. And she pulls up the video and it starts playing and they hear some gibberish and garbled words. And <laughs> Azura goes flush red. And this was a few weeks ago before they had the uh, birthday for Bakugo. And Azura goes flush red and Mina's like, I got a video to show you guys. It's of, Azura, it's of Azura sleeping and saying stuff. 
something. And Azura jumped across the room and used all three arms to pin, or all six arms to pin Mina down and take the phone. And Mina's already turned the phone off, so it's locked completely. No one can get in without the password. And she starts putting random things that Mina says a lot, or Mina no, uh, has been or known for. And she gets into the phone. And then she sees that there's a password on the app that she's trying to get into. And she's like, damn it. And Mina goes, ha ha. And she walks up to Mina, or she lets Mina go and gives Mina back her phone and saying, you win this time. Next time, I'll get you. And Mina goes, ha ha. That's if you can. And I'll be back. I need to eat dinner, or break, or lunch. Okay. So, on this date, they go back to the cafe. And Izumi sees them and goes, Oh, you guys here for a cake? And Azura says, Yes, I am. And he's here for a pastry, if you have any. And she goes, I cook one batch of pastries a day, and it was it happened to be a level two pastry because that's all, that's as far as I can go up for normal people. But if you want to special order a pastry for tomorrow, I can. Azura goes, mm, would you be able to make the level fifteen challenge? He wants to redo the challenge because he feels like he kind of. Just skimmed over it with the water that he used. And Izumi goes, <laughs> you've already won the challenge. You don't need to do it again. And Baku goes, level two after the level 15, it's going to be child's play. And she hears that and goes, oh, you did not just say my food's child's play. And he goes, the heat is. I don't know about the rest of your cooking, though. And she goes, what about you? You think sugar is child play? And she goes, no. I'd actually like to try the level two pastry. And she goes, okay. So she brings out a level two pastry and a level 16 that she's been working on for like a year or two. She's been working on this for like a while. And she goes, okay, my very first level 16 pastry. And since you've already completed the challenge and you didn't call my food child's play, you get it for free. On the other hand, for you, if you survive that and you don't call my food child's play anymore, you get it for free. And he goes, okay. So he eats it and... She goes, no water bucket this time. And he goes, that's fine. And he feels the heat. He has the same reaction as the 15. But it's a lot less because he's already been uh, tempered to the 15. And she has the level 2. And she's like, oh, oh, hot, 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 hot. And <laughs> Izumi goes, yeah. Normal people can't really handle the level 2. Level 1 is just like your average normal day Cajun food. Really hot to normal people, but to Cajun people, it, it it's meh. And Izumi's like, ha, 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 ha. And she's, she's basically overreacting compared to what Bakugo's feeling. And Bakugo goes, this is good. And Izumi asks, so... On a scale of 1 to 10, or sorry, 1 to 16. And he goes, hot level. Right now I feel 15. Flavor level and deliciousness, 20. And she goes, ooh, okay. And she looks at Azure and goes, what about you? And she goes, since I don't like heat, um, and she's breathing heavily at this point. 
She goes, 10 out of 10 for heat. Um, and she's still breathing really heavily. And she goes, how the flavor works, uh, 20 out of 10. And Izumi's like, yeah, I know. They're good. And Izumi goes like, yeah, it's really good. I can't stand heat, though. Can I get a glass of milk? And she goes, sorry, we don't serve drinks here. And she goes, okay. And Izumi goes, but for you, I'll make an exception. I'll go get you a glass of water. And Azura goes, okay. And she runs into the back, gets a glass of water, and brings it forward. And it's, it has a slight red hint to it. And Azura goes, um, I don't think this is water. And Izumi goes, it, it is water. And hot sauce. And Azura goes, okay, what level? And she goes, one. And Azura goes, oh, um, okay. So she drinks it and the hot, this is going to be a weird reaction, but normally hot sauce makes hot, uh, strong, uh, different hot sauces make hot sauces stronger. So and it also ruins flavors. But for this one, it made the hot sauce cool down a little and heat cool down a little and made the flavor better. And Izumi didn't stop drinking until the, the water was gone. So, we'll be right back. So, after they're done eating at the bakery, they go to a pizza joint. But they're already full, so they invite a few other people to join them. And they invited uh, Todoroki and Momo Yayorozu. And Ida and Uraraka. But Azura says that Uraraka gives her a bad vibe. And Bakugo says, yeah, I get the same vibe. How about this? We try setting them up together and see what happens. And she goes, but that's Muna's job. And he goes, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, how about this? How about this? We just invite them, see what they do. And if you could help Todoroki out, because he has the problem. And I don't know why he has the problem, but he has a problem. You can convince him to go with her. Because I know Muna's already shipped them. And Azure goes, oh, okay, we'll do. And I'm going to end it here. Oh, no. We skip the date. I'm not ending it. We skip the date. And we go to the next day. And Azura is in Bakugo's room. And Bakugo is cuddling with Azura. And they're late for class because they kind of stayed up a little later than they should have. Talking. Not anything nasty. Get your head out of the gutter. Not anything nasty yet. <laughs> but they're talking. And so um, I'll be right back. I got to tell something on the Discord. So they were cuddling in, their, in Baku's room. And Mina walks into class and sees that they're not there. And they're normally, att their attendance is perfect normally. So she's like, oh, crap, what happened? And um, Todoroki, Momo, and Ida and Uraraka all walk in at the same time, saying last night was fun. I'm glad that it, uh, Bakugo and Azura invited us. And Mina hearing this is like, oh, wait, does Bakugo know I shipped them together? And Bakugo, who basically got summoned with her saying Bakugo, starts to shiver awake, being like, uh, someone's talking about me. Um, 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 um. And Azura got woken up slightly by this and goes, what? What's going on? And she stretches all of her arms. And Bakugo goes, oh, hey, um, I think someone's talking about me. And she goes, 
Probably Mina. Uh, Ida and Uraraka probably didn't keep their mouths shut. And she just falls back asleep and he goes, what time is it? And they walk out, or Baco looks at the clock and goes, oh crap, we gotta get out! We gotta get out! And Azura goes, what time is it then? And he goes, we're late for class! And she goes, oh shit! And she wakes up completely and runs to her room. And she gets dressed. And she walk. She runs to the classroom. But Aizawa, seeing that they're gone, is like, Ooh. Everybody, we're going to work on something special today. And he calls up uh, Cement Toss and Ectoplasm and said, We're doing it today. And they go, Okay. Um, and he goes, No buts. We're doing it today. So he goes, Go to the training grounds. And they're like, which ones? And he goes, the ones where I tested you. And I go, okay. And he puts a note on the uh, podium saying, you're late. So no super move for you. And he put that on the notes. Uh, he put a note like that on the podium saying, unless you can find me, you get extra training. And Azura gets there first because she's been stomping the ground while she was going through the um, hallway in the dorm. So she gained energy. But there's a limit to how much energy she can gain from stomping the ground. And it's half of All Might's strength. So. She's just as fast as All Might. And she runs to the uh, classroom. And she sees the note. And she's like crap. So she starts punching the wall. Till she loses one arm. And this wall is not a normal wall. It's a quirk reinforced wall. So it's even harder than titanium. And she goes. Okay there we go. And she starts running all over the place. And she currently has only two arms left. And. When I say her arms blow off. I mean from the elbow joint. All the way to past the fingertips. They blow off. So it's not completely Azura's. But. It's still Azura's quirk, or Azura's ability. Because Azura's arm completely blows off. So she has two, uh, four stumps and two arms, and she's running around on campus at supersonic speeds, and she finally gets to the training ground, and she's like, first place look. And she walks in, and she goes... Oh, I'm glad I found you. And Ectoplasm walks up behind her and goes, Yes, but you don't get to train today. And she goes, I know. At least I don't have to do extra training today. And Azaga goes, No, no, no. You still got to train today. Not this training. And everybody's currently working on super moves. And she goes, Well, I already got a super move. My final punch. And he goes, Yeah, yeah. But also, your your super move literally is catast uh, catastrophe class. And she goes, yeah, yeah. Um, makes sense, though. I do have the strength to destroy the universe if I punch right. And he goes, yeah, yeah. You can stop bragging. And she goes, I'm not bragging. I'm just telling the truth. And so, we skip to the bus ride to the USJ, and everybody's asking her, because she's leaning on Bakugo, and everybody sees this, and is like, oh, okay. And she's leaning on Bakugo, and everybody's asking her, what is exactly her quirk? And she goes, I have a mutation, and she holds up all three arms on one side, and she goes, my quirk is the ability to absorb kinetic energy and energy of any kind, 
and redistribute it into power behind my punches. And she explains what uh, Azura has for his ability in the game. And I'm going to end it there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Talk to you guys later. Bye!